as a rock I will build my church And the gates of hell Shall not prevail We have worked our way down to the good part yeah. That that cannot be taken away You think walking in the building Make you feel good That word of God Hallelujah Will put a smile on your face It'll put joy in your heart And running in your feet So we thank God down here at 2855 Merrimack Come on, come on, hallelujah The door is open for all those That are looking for a better way God bless your heart. As we look unto him, amen, and make our request, let's bow our head. Father, we do thank you and we praise you for this day. This being the day that you have made for us to be glad and to rejoice. We want to give you the honor, oh God, for just everything that's been said concerning you. The testimonies, all the magnification and the glorification that you have got in this place today. We want to be the first to say you are worthy of it all. Lord, we ask you now to look upon us as we're preparing to get ready to stand before such a great people, a people who now have loved. Lord, move in a mighty way today. We're praying that you would take over in this vessel of clay and use these lips to speak thine word, your word of life and power. Move in this service, oh God. Move by the hearing of your word in the lives of men and women that are abused, that are broken, that are shattered. Let them experience your love today that they might realize you love them. You come to save them. You come to restore. You come to heal. You come to deliver. So as we stand upon your word, oh God, confirm it. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people said amen. Amen. Let's put our hands together for him. Oh, to God be the glory. Amen. I thank God. Amen. And we take nothing for granted of what the Lord is doing. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. It is a joy and an honor. Amen. To be able to stand before such a great people. That's who we are. Our Sunday school lesson was taken from 1 Peter chapter 2 today, talking about the people of God. Amen. That raw priesthood, that chosen generation, that holy nation, amen, that he chose and called, amen, to be built up a spiritual house. Oh, out of the darkness into the light, amen, he called us, amen, to help somebody else. I want to say that loud this morning, amen, because if you're in the body of Christ, God chose you, he heard your cry, and the call and the mission is for him to bless you, build you, to help somebody else, amen, to be the salt in this earth and the light, amen, that shines before man. To make them to know if he did it for me, he can do it for you. Amen. amen. I stand six foot five, but I'm not ashamed of serving the Lord. Amen. Ain't nothing jive about it. Been there, done all that foolishness. Amen. It's better on the Lord's side. Somebody say amen. When you have been one place and you get a chance to experience someone else, then you can say, hey, it's better over here. Thank God, amen. If there's ever been such a thing as it's greener, it's only green on the Lord's side. Amen. Praise God. On his side is where we ought to all want to be. So we salute the people of God everywhere. Amen. We encourage you to keep soldiering on for the Lord. Amen. Praise God to be all what God has called you to be. We thank God for our teachers. We want to give honor to where honor is due. Amen. The Lord is using these handmaidens. Amen. Teacher Valerie Brown and Lady Lisa. Amen. Mother uh, Lenora Anderson. I thank God for what God is doing for the church. 
Amen. Praise the Lord. He said he was going to do it in the book of Joel. In the last days, he was going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Amen. If they just stuck with that, amen, what would they have done? Amen. They come up with all this stuff inspired by the devil to make folks feel only God is only choosing man. Look at here. Don't don't fool. Don't don't be fooled like that. Amen. He said, upon all flesh, your sons and your daughters was going to prophesy. Amen. That's what he said. God set this thing up. And when man start getting involved with it, anything he put his hands to, he always tear something up because he got the tear up up in him. If he ain't got God It's the enemy that comes in With all these concepts like that But all oh, if man in the church Would get back to God Originally in the temple Then we would see the mind And we would see what God is going to do And what he's up to Because he's, you can't stop God I tell you that you, you cannot like it all you want to Amen And God going to keep using what he wants to use in a time like these, praise the Lord. So we thank God for our teachers, amen. Thank God, amen, for Lady Lisa, my wife, amen. I'm blessed on today. I see something today as I've sat back there, amen. I didn't even know, but God knew I God said, look, call John on up here to do what he did, amen. God is looking for me, amen. He looking for some men, amen. Not cat that is men. Amen. He's looking for some men. My father always said it take a man to live safe. Amen. It took a man to do it for the Lord. Boy can't do it, but a man can do it. Oh, the first time I heard that, he challenged me. Because you know how us men feel like, oh, wait a minute, I'm a man now. Amen. It take a man to live right and to do right. Somebody say amen. Thank God. The Lord put something on our heart to share with you on today. Amen. What God is doing by his spirit because he's always moving in the background. Amen. To hear what the Lord is doing when you can't see it with your 2020. You better know God ain't somewhere sitting still. He's, he's doing great things. Amen. And you get time, time, and it'll manifest itself. Praise the Lord. That's why as believers, we keep believing. We are not of them that cast away our confidence. We keep believing, brother. Amen. Because we know who got all power in his hand. This morning, I want to seek to execute what the Lord has given us today. Amen. I believe this is fitting. Amen. Just uh, for everywhere, wherever there is a uh, human. Amen. If it's ever been a time, amen, for the Lord to breathe on us, the breath of God to flow, amen, in our lives upon us, that time is now. Amen. Hey, for the church and for those, amen, that they came in, that breath would bring things to life. Amen. So this morning, if you come away with me in your Bibles to Ezekiel, amen, Ezekiel chapter 37. Praise the Lord. Ezekiel chapter 37 is what we're going to be. Thank the Lord. And we want to do it as God give us to do it. Amen. That it will be found being of edification in your hearing on today. Thank God. Chapter 37. I'm going to have Lady Lisa read verses 1 through 14. Amen. And we're going to seek to uh, execute uh, what the Lord have given us on today for the hearer. Amen. I'm blessed on the other night. Uh, teacher Valerie Brown came in with that word. Jesus come to restore. Amen. She touched some things in there. And I said, Lord, she tap dancing all around. What you talking to me about? Amen. Because I mean, it's smack dab the silly. It said, look, and anytime you talk about restoring something, amen. Anytime you talk about saving or salvaging something, what you're getting ready to salvage and save, it may look like it's been destroyed. Amen. But all oh, those hands of God. Amen. Him that said, let them be. I am persuaded there is nothing he can not do. Amen. There is nothing that the Lord cannot do. Praise the Lord. And when we look to him and we believe in him and get to know him, you come without a shadow of a doubt to know he can do all things but fail. Amen. And what we're picking up this morning, amen, if you allow, amen, in the book of Ezekiel, the prophet Ezekiel, oh, the man of God, amen, that God gave on such a time in the season in Israel life, amen. You had Jeremiah, you had Ezekiel, you had all these ones that took a stand for God when Israel found themselves, amen, the chosen and the elect of God being in conditions and places they really shouldn't have been in. 
amen, and since the Old Testament was just a glimpse or a shadow of things to come, it was things that was not seen clearly, amen, by them because the way God fitly framed it. But God always had an original intent for the people that he called unto himself. When he made man in his image and his likeness, he made man a holy man. Amen. That man he made was in union and fellowship with him. He made them all body, soul, and mind. Amen. Given us to really see the original intent, the biblical intent was that man was more spiritual than he was natural. Or if you allow me, he had a soul, he had a spirit. Amen. And he had a body. Thank God he had a body. Praise the Lord. And we understand what Adam did and when Eve him, how they did what they did. But if you know, as we examine and just don't pick Eve and Adam apart, amen, we can see the love of God. And in spite of what they've done, God loved man so. Because man came from him. He didn't say, I'm just going to ball them up and throw them away. Amen. But oh, I got a plan to redeem him. Amen. All oh, where the enemy seemed to come in and carry them away captive. Amen. And he went into the servitude of his enemy. The Lord didn't sit there like a widow and say, well, it's all over. Amen. He said, oh, I got a plan. Thank God, amen, to redeem my man. And I, I just want to give that hope out there today. No matter where you at in your life, what's going on right now, there is hope for you. Amen. Because the one that breathed into man when he made him and he became a living soul, hey, y'all, he's still breathing today. Amen. He's still blowing his breath on men and women today. And I got some witnesses in the room today, and I'm going to be the first to throw my hand up that he breathed on me. Amen. One day, amen, at the age of 22. And I ain't been the same since. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. I ain't been the same since. And I know if he done it for me, he can do it for you. So I understand in the days that we are in with theology and all our rabbis and all these uh, uh, theologians and everybody that looks at the scriptures. I'm learning in this hour when we examine the text, when we do our exegesis and we do all the pulling apart and putting together. Once you get through, I pray that you see God after you get through messing with these holy scriptures because they're giving to us that we can see who he is. And I, it's been my prayer. I said, Lord, help me to see like you see. Help me to see, help me to see what you was up to. Help me to know your mind. I know we in that day and hour. They said, don't nobody know the mind of God. Amen. I want to let you know something. You can get to know God's mind. Amen. It was the will of God for you to know his mind. That's why Jesus said, do you want to know how to pray? Pray this. Thy will be done. We want look to know the will. You got to know the thoughts. You got to know the mind. So it's for you as believers in mankind to know the mind of God. And it lies upon the fivefold. It lies upon the apostle, the prophet, amen, the evangelist, the pastors, and the teachers to teach the mind of God to you that you might realize God ain't against you. He's for you. He ain't coming. I don't care how it look. He wants you to know he's more than able. Amen. No matter how and how low you got, he still loves you. Amen. All right, you messed up and went the wrong way. He still loves you. Amen. His arm is stretched out all day long unto men and women that are saying, Lord, help me. Save me. Forgive me. So if you don't mind this morning as we go into these scriptures in chapter 37, and I want you to read 1 through 14. What do the Bible say? The hand of the Lord was upon me yeah. and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord uh -huh. and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. Oh, bless him. And caused me to pass by them round about. Mm -hmm. And behold, there were many in the open valley. And lo, there were, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these dry, can these bones live? Oh, he saw a lot down there, right? Many in the valley. Mm. Come on, keep reading. And I answered, O oh Lord God, thou knowest. Mm. Again he said unto me, 
you, God can do it. Keep going. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Mm -hmm. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise. And, and, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. My God. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above. Look at God. But there was no breath in them. Mm -hmm. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind. Yes. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus said the Lord God. Speak to the wind. Come from the four winds. Yes. O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. Yes. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, mm -hmm. and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. A great army. Then he said unto me, yes. Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. What? Behold, they say, our bones are dry, and our hope is lost. They lost hope. We are cut off from our part. Oh, we done messed up. Therefore, prophesy and say unto them. This is the message he gave. Thus said the Lord God. Behold, O oh my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come out of your graves mm -hmm. and bring you into the land of Israel. Come on now. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O oh my people, and brought ye up out of your graves. Yes. And shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live, yes. and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall ye know that I am the Lord, that I the Lord have spoken it, mm -hmm. and performed it, yes. saith the Lord. Come on, let's give God a great big hand praise for the reading of the word. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord said prophesy it. I see the condition. I know, amen, what they've done. I've seen they're going about. I see they disconnect. I see, amen, you're cut off. I see, amen, that you're lean, you're so lean. I see that you're dead in your sins. If you know now, I love the way the Lord did this because he chose the prophet Ezekiel. The prophet is the one that guides. They're the one that gives you God's voice. What is God saying? Amen. In the midst of what is taking place of people that rebelled and hardened their heart. Amen. The Lord raised up a prophet in the person of Ezekiel. He was one of the major prophets of the Old Testament. Praise the Lord. And a lot of Ezekiel, when you read Ezekiel, he gave him a lot of things that was in visions that he was able to go forth and see that gave a lot of symbolism to that we might understand and be guided towards God. Amen. His message of judgment and hope and his role in this critical period and point in Israel history was something to be learned from. When we look at how God, amen, revealed himself in bits and pieces and parts in the Old Testament, how he carefully rolled it out. He who is the only wise God, amen, knew how to roll out bits and pieces that he keep you on the edge of your seat. Amen. I mean, he revealed it on the need basis, what he wanted the prophets to share with Israel. Amen. Because he always had in his man, his mind, I'm bringing men back to God. When Israel thought in their minute mind that it was all about just them as a nation, they didn't understand the wisdom of God was I'm going to take the smallest of nation. I'm going to take that that can't nobody gloat in and I'm going to use you not that you can be magnified, amen, but that I can be magnified because I want all of mankind, amen, to know I'm God and beside me there is no other. Somebody say amen. So God had a plan and oftentimes if we don't watch ourselves, we'll get off into the book and we'll read it. And we don't get the life of the pages. Don't get the life.
life of the scripture. And the next thing you know, what we see is Ezekiel. What we see is Israel. Amen. But I would have you this morning, if you will come up higher with me, amen, that you can begin to behold how this great God, our Savior, amen, he sees things. Because when things seem to be impossible with God, all things are possible. And I got some cutrines out there that's doing it for God. And I want to encourage your heart, amen. Don't get caught up with what you see, amen. Get caught up with what you know God can do. Because if you look upon things, it'll look like things are hopeless and in despair. And you'll get caught and paralyzed right there. And don't realize that's just a good opportunity for God to show himself strong that man would realize you didn't do it, but God did it. Amen. God got this thing fitly framed. So when we look at the role and the calling of Ezekiel, his name it was meant in Hebrew to bring God strength in. Amen. If there's ever been a time, amen, for the service of the Most High to be strengthened in the things of God. Amen. It's not about beholding what's happening. It's about beholding what God is up to. And when I look upon the face of the world, look, our God is up to something here. Because men have grown tired. They realize I'm without life. Amen. I'm leveled to the ground. I don't know which way to go. Amen. I, I, I just don't know I tried this and tried that and, and, and instead of looking at them and saying oh look at him I believe the church is supposed to be saying Lord this is your time amen this is your time to do great things even when I look at the landscape of the church today that I've got disconnected amen that's not about the will and the mind of God no more it seems like we're more into building organization and being big wigs and caught up in our own and not looking on the needs of others and amen, but not seeing instead of lifting men up, we count them out and we're kicking them out. But God ain't never been like that, amen. He come to save the lost. And when I teach him, Mallory Brown just went forth the only other night. I said, Lord, help me to keep the vision, amen. Because you come to restore, you come to save. Did you not know when you save that which is lost or you restore something back to its original capacity, that thing is more valuable than it was in its first state. Because it takes a lot to restore something. You get you a 1957 Chevy something that my God that was made out of that steel you run into is like a tank and you get somebody with the ability that can refurbish and restore that thing back. You might have paid only that little bit amount of money back then. You can sell that car today for some big old money because when you get restored you become valuable to God. And so God don't have an eye like man. He can look on the need and look me on all your fault, your blemishes, your deeds, and your deadness, and realize what he can do. And I don't know about you, this message today is, Lord, breathe, Lord, breathe again. Amen. Breathe, Lord, breathe again. Amen. Because there's some that need the breath of God on their life, that they can come from death to life. The Bible said, they that hear shall live. And then there's some that was alive at one time, and they need the Lord to breathe again. Amen. We need the breath of God. In Hebrew, that breath represents ruach. Amen. Ruach. That's how he did. And God said, Amen. When God speaks, his word is powerful. And here goes Ezekiel looking at in this vision. God was showing him the state of Israel. And God wasn't nervous in falling out. God wasn't sitting up in here fussing with himself and doubting himself. He wanted, he wanted Ezekiel to realize, I see it. It's a valley of dry bones. Oh, but I got a way. I got a way how I'm going to redeem them. You know, I found out something. This hour that we in, mankind need to realize something. All that's taking place in your life, and all that seem the mishaps, and it seem all the unsuccess you have it. Don't be like those that didn't know what we know today. Amen. And you just think God don't love you, and God don't care. Amen. You know, maybe he cut me off, and he don't look. No, 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 no. We got 
got too much knowledge to know different now. Amen. It's like when Job was going through what he went through. Job was a man most righteous in the earth and he seemed to be couldn't understand that thing. But God, amen, chose one that man might understand who God is because the Bible gave us to know that Satan was walking one day, amen, up and fro, to and fro in the earth and the Lord said, hey, where are you going there? Amen. And he told that old devil, told Satan, have you considered my servant Job? Amen. Giving us to understand something that we don't get an understanding of no more because preachers don't really preach what brings death. They don't really preach what brings separation. They don't really preach, amen, what, what brings destruction. And I would have you to know the devil is still the devil. Amen. The Lord gave us when we started out. He said, you preach a great big God and a defeated devil. I need men to see I'm for him and the devil is against him. All the enemy come to do is kill, steal, and destroy. He want to destroy you. He want to kill you. He want to steal the very thing that God has given you. And on that note, I mean sometimes you got to look around when you're considering and you find yourself in the church. And you find yourself in a local body. And all you doing is backbiting. All you doing is looking down your long nose at somebody. Amen. All you come to do is see what they saying about Sally, see what they saying about Johnny, amen, but at the end of the day, I have you to know that's a place of valley of dry bones because my God when the saints that are alive get together they love each other but they ain't coming to see each other they coming to see the hand of God do what he can do amen, they coming to magnify him, they coming in, enter into his gates with thanksgiving when you alive, that's how you come I got to preach it like this because God got a remedy. He got a people, amen, that have not lost their strength. That still got vigor and the strength ain't just for them, but it's to help somebody else. You got to learn how to accept strength when it come your way. If you're weak and you're leaning over, you need strength. If you're discouraged and you're busted and despondent, don't know what to do. And you don't get joy no more living for the Lord. You need the strength of God to you need the breath of God to come again. And Israel got into a place, and many times we can study and come scholars and looking at what took place in Israel life and forget what brought the separation. If we go back to the beginning of the book in Genesis, when there was a uniting and a togetherness with God and man, he was in right relationship, he was in obedience, he was doing the things that pleased God. But there was one that was lurking, that was one in the atmosphere that had lost his first estate, that didn't like the union, didn't like the connection and he had a mindset to interrupt or sever that relationship. Amen. Because he knew God said the day you eat or touch that tree you shall die. Amen. And so he had a strategic plan to separate mankind and the Lord watched it the whole time and I mean to tell you his loan suffering and his parents, even after the man disobeyed, didn't stop him for what he come to do. And I want you to know you that's out there, it's been long duration. Your soul has grown tired. Your soul has grown frustrated in doing the things that you're doing, not liking yourself for doing what you're doing. Tired of your ways. I mean tired of being dead. Tired of being lost. Tired of being sick. Tired of being bound. Tired of being hurt. I mean you tired of that life. Well the message is on today is Lord breathe Lord. I mean breathe again that man might live. It took the breath of God to bring man to life and it's going to keep the breath of God to keep us alive and when you lie, when you find yourself dying spiritually you need God to breathe again because Israel was a chosen nation to represent and bear who God was. God had a plan for them. They didn't quite understand it, but God wanted to use them to provoke other nations unto him. He wanted to use them because God loved all mankind. You got to watch these slow bellies that preach these messages like it's all about this and all about this people and that people. 
people. Look, God loved all nations of men. Out of one blood, he made everybody. We want to culturalize this thing, but you better get out of culture and get into the spirit and understand, amen, this world got a system and this world got ways that's been given to them by the prince and the power of the air. Amen. And I mean, it's not pleasing to God. And God is calling the people out of the world. He's calling the people unto himself. He's calling the people to put their eyes on the Lord. Not trying to be like other nations and be like other people. God wants you to be like him. Amen. We are his children. We are the ones he paid the redeeming price for. And he wanted Ezekiel heart to be in character. I want you to see for yourself. I'm going to show you in the vision because for you to guide my people, I got to show you what I'm up to. And many times God has been leading us in our leadership courses because what has taken place in the fivefold, they have lost their sight. They have lost their assignment. They have lost their mission. Amen. They don't really understand no more because the devil has blinded them with all these distractions. And the enemy has come on strong with false teachers, doctrines of devils, demonic spirits. But the Lord say, look, I still got some that ain't bowed down. I still got some that see clearly. And I'm going to use their mouth. I'm going to use them as vessels to speak to mankind and I'm going to do what I always designed and designed to do and that is to bring man from death to life and so when the preacher preach he's able to look beyond the faults of mankind and see the soul need because God amen that's the type of God he is if anybody have ever tasted the goodness of the Lord and have ever experienced the love of God they would be the first to tell you they was messed up and they did many things that was wrong but my God he looked beyond their fault and saw their needs they went before God talking about I ain't bad as this way I ain't did as much as that way no 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 it wasn't their brother or their sister they said it's me oh Lord I need you to help my life and Israel was shown to Ezekiel by God they was in this place of despair desolation cut off from God Amen. And the Lord let him see it. And my God, they were saying things like he cut us off. And they were saying other things concerning God. But they didn't realize because they got their mind blind. Amen. It is the devil. They sins and disobedient cut them off. Amen. Look at here. Although they were cut off, we see the love of God abiding upon with them to save them and deliver them. So when we see the prophets and we see the Jeremiah's of the the world, the weeping prophets, and we see ones that had to go with messages to a people that was full of rebellion and disobedience. What we really see, you got to not look at Jeremiah and see God, amen, exhibiting his spirit within them. He wept for people because he didn't want to see the souls of man be lost. It's just like when Jesus was weeping over Jerusalem because he came to save that which is lost. And and man didn't even know, amen, who was the cause of his degradation. But Jesus did. He knew who came down and was threw down here, amen, to oppose and be the adversary. Remember in the Old Testament, the Bible lets us know, amen, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because Satan has come down not to bless you. He come down not to love you. He come down not to put your life together. But he's coming down to destroy you. But the Lord, my God, he had a heart for mankind. Even in his separation, even in his degradation, the Lord said, I come to lift you up. I come to save you. I'm not the one that's against you. It is the enemy that comes to kill. Jesus came in this thing in John 10 and 10, preaching and speaking that that the Pharisees and Sadducees could not see. Amen. When they looked on Gentiles and said, look at y'all, y'all do this. He didn't come down like that because they didn't realize 
Carolina, they needed to be saved just as bad as the Gentiles. Amen. At the end of the day, because he realized the enemy was trying to destroy that that he created in his image and likeness. That's why when Jesus died upon that cross, amen, he just didn't die for one set of people. He said, whosoever, I'm dying for mankind. I'm paying the price for the white man, the black man, the Indian, the Russian, amen, if you're in the Middle East, I'm paying the price that you might live. Somebody say amen. amen. When we look at this, this ship of amen was among the Jews. He was taken in the land of Babylon in the exile during the second departure from Judah. He was right along with them, but if you notice, Ezekiel didn't have a spirit like the rest of them. Amen. Look, I want you to know something here. We are in this world, even when he bring you out, you still in the midst of an evil world. You still amongst folks that don't know God and going the wrong way. But when you with God, he makes the difference. He keep you sound. He keep you motivated. He keep you wanting to live life. He's the reason of our existence. He make life sweet. Amen. Just because other folks bound, you found out you ain't got to be bound. Just because other folks lose their life, you ain't got to lose your liveliness for God. Because he's made you a lively stone. Somebody say amen. I've been in places and I've been in churches coming up on the ranks. And I would see some. My father used to always say, don't lose your joy. Amen. Stay excited for God. Amen. You stay on fire for the Lord. And then you, I used to be as a babe, like, why is he saying that? Because, you know, I mean, Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. You know, I didn't have to hear the music to get right there and go in a dance. I didn't have to see somebody else start dancing before I dance because it was all in me. But he would preach and he would teach. And I would sit right there and I said, wait a minute. If he had the tell the church, don't lose it. That means somebody in here has lost it. That means somebody have lost their fervor, have lost their dedication, have lost their commitment, lost their joy, and lost their strength. And the Lord made me to understand the only way you lose from God is when you get off into sin. When you get the dabbling and dibbling in disobedience. When you let the enemy disconnect you. Amen. He brings death. I mean, death came in through disobedience. It came in through sin, but life came in by obedience. If you say yes and keep saying yes and keep choosing the Lord, you can keep on living. Somebody say amen. We look like and we're looking at Israel and God has said it's a valley of dry bones. I mean it's full of dry bones. Israel kings, prophets, and priests have gotten vain and polluted that when the leadership get messed up, there is no hope for the people. Amen. Look, the blind lead the blind and everybody go into the ditch. But God had a prophet. He had an example, amen, that he can stand up in that was ordained for that time, season, and purpose, that whose name represented strength. And although that there was many people, God said, I'm not giving up on them. Mm -hmm. Now Israel, because they lost their weight, thought God did. Because that's how the devil do. Things are going on in your life. You say, God don't love me. People are saying, well, God was for you. He was doing nothing, all that different stuff, and that's wrong to do. Amen. Amen. You got to identify, first of all, that God come to help all mankind, and God don't do no wrong. Amen. And God got principles. God has fit to frame this word, this world with his word. Amen. And he can do great things when you're on his side. Amen. Mother Anderson preached the message who's on the Lord's side. That means when you're on the Lord's side, who's committed to the things in the way of God, who's committed to the vocation for what they've been called, who's not ashamed of him that brought them out of darkness into the marvelous light. Because if you stay if you stay in him, you stay connected and you stay life. Amen. But when you get disconnected, you find yourself dying. And Israel went over up in there and took on Babylonian ways. Even though he said you're going into a land of captivity. Amen. Look, we're in the land of captivity right now, saints. Amen. Look, and then the world lies in wickedness. But you that have been called out of darkness into this marvelous light. Amen. You ain't bound. You free. Amen. We ain't got you in no change no more. Amen. He's changed your life. And God was 
expecting Israel to go into Babylon in, amen, and let that nation know we're going to hold to our customs. We're going to hold to the statues of God. Amen. We're going to realize, yeah, y'all doing that, but we got the best thing. Amen. But they went over there and decided to be like other nations. If you want to lose the life that God has given you, start getting like the world. Get too close to it. Trying to win it and trying to become it. That ain't how you win it by becoming it. You watch wars. Come out of there and stay out. And let them see there's hope to those that run for their life as I seek to try to get ready to close here because I want to tie something together that the Lord made me to understand. You got God showing Ezekiel in a vision. The state of Israel. The, their deadness. They have no animation. All they are full of is complaint. They're blaming me and have not looked at their own ways. They're wondering why the enemy is conquering them. They're wondering why, amen, it seemed like they lost everything I promised them. It's not because it wasn't for them to have what I said, but the enemy came in. If you notice in the Old Testament, you don't see a lot speaking on the devil. You don't see, God didn't reveal a whole lot because all that was being written was for our learning. And we find Israel, when they went places, they was always fighting. Amen. They were in literal fights and killing. But I found out in the physical, you can't kill no demon. You can't kill no devil. Amen. So you got to learn how to fight in the spirit. So God was laying for a pattern that we can understand. It's symbolic. Amen. Because I need you to know. Amen. What we are engaged in, whether you save or unsave, is a spiritual war. Amen. We are engaging in principalities. Amen. That's not your uncle that's like that. That's the devil that's in you. Got him bound to drugs. There's a demonic spirit that go in wicked ways. That devil will make you despise your siblings and despise your mother and father and hate your brother and you post a be in church. You're supposed to learn there's a spirit that go with that behavior. And if they get delivered, they'll get a right mind. If they get delivered, they won't be what you know them to be. So God is wanting to build the church up. He's wanting to breathe on the church again and bring it back to life. That man might see power belongs unto God. That he's more than able to bring back to life that has lost life. Bring healing to those that have been battered and bruised because the devil comes to kill but Jesus comes to give life. Somebody say amen. All it takes is the rule of God. The breath of God to breathe. To breathe upon man. He told Ezekiel, this is what I need you to do. I need you to prophesy to the winds. I need you to get to understanding don't get subdued by looking at the state of Israel. Now I need you to take your eyes and go up with I need you to prophesy to the four winds. I need you to begin to speak. Amen. Unto me. I need you to intercede. I need you to stand for me. Amen. Because those are my people. Amen. I'm going to do just what I said I'm going to do. But he's going to do it through the hearts of people that want God. And you can't let the devil get you to a spot where you just give up on God. Many times you got to just sit there and man up. Amen. I went wrong. Amen. Lord, it's not you. It's me. I turned from you. You didn't turn from me. Amen. I did you wrong. You didn't do me no wrong. Amen. Because when I was with you, you helped me upon, helped me to stay on top. When I was with you, you helped me to run through troops and leap over walls. When I was with you and you was with me, you gave me power to prevail. But I took my eyes off you and went another direction. And ever since I went away from you, life I have not experienced. And Israel found himself in this valley, in a low place. Because that's what sin and the devil do. It takes you low. But I thank God he had a man that can stand in the gap and guide them how to get out of that valley, how to come out of that dead 
dead state. And if there's ever been a time the church need to know, amen, you stop looking at God like his ways ain't equal and start understanding it's your ways that are unequal. All this stuff talking about we heard over, look what you was doing and look how you done it. Don't blame nobody. Take ownership of that thing. And then tell the Lord, created me a clean heart. Then tell the Lord, clean me. And then tell the Lord, restore me. I mean, give me back the joy that I once had. I mean, my simple had to stand in some tough times. And while Israel was laying in that valley, God wanted him to know, I got power. I got the ability. I know how to do it. It's not hopeless. All is not lost. All I need you to do is don't lose hope in me. Stay obedient, Ezekiel, and do what I said do. Because the minute you stop doing what God said do, you will lose your life. But God called Ezekiel for such a time to stand in the gap. And to see what he saw and elevate to understand that same God that seemed to be I backed off, he wanna come on them strong. So God gave them how to intercede and go in behalf of the people. Ezekiel was rejected. Simple was hated. Just like all the other prophets. I would have you to know the Gentiles did not kill the prophets of God. The Jews did. Mm -hmm. Israel did. Judah did. Every prophet that we got, major and minors, Ezekiel was one of the majors. They killed their own prophets. The vast majority of Israel refused to walk in obedience. And the light bothered them. Because their deeds was dark. It bothered them to see their sister and brother hanging there with God. And they didn't want to hang in there with God. And what ends up happening, they start coming against one another because it was motivated by a spirit. It is the enemy that comes in to break up relationships. It's the enemy that comes in between a brother and a brother, a sister and a sister, a sister and a brother. It's the devil that comes to divide and break that relationship. He don't like relationships. He want to hook you up with something that ain't no relationship where you're miserable. You know, some of us have been there. You've been around and you've been with somebody and you called it a relationship, but it wasn't a relationship because y'all didn't relate. All you did was fuss, fight, and all you did was complain and murmur. You ain't in a relationship when you're doing that. You just in a mess. Amen. When you're in a relationship, you relate to one another. Amen. You don't sit right there and fight one another, beat one another, have the death, cuss one another. No, no, that ain't no relationship. You in torment, but God is Amen. Come to give your life to bring you out of that stuff. That you might have it and have it more abundantly. We need the breath of God. He said you prophesy. Ezekiel obeyed as the scriptures we heard reading into our hearing. And when he did, he heard the noise. And that army began to come together. Note now, there was a prophet had went forth. It begin to come together, the sin you begin to get back. See, when you begin to walk in the light and you give heed to God, he begin to bring you out and break you out. Everything the devil that tried to take away from you, he restores it back to you. Everything the caterpillar and the canker worm have come in to get, he give you back your strength, he give you back your soundness, he give you back the ability you once had. You may be in a place of inactiveness, but when that burden of sin is lifted up off your shoulder, amen, when you acknowledge your own ways and say, Lord, I need you. It wasn't you, it was me. My ways was unequal, not yours. I turned my ear away from you. I didn't stay focused. I let the devil come in. When the Lord hear that cry, he comes in to restore you. He comes in to lift up his spirit as a standing, to tell that devil back up out of his life. He belongs to me. She belongs to me. I come, I paid the price. This soul belongs to me. I need you to know.
know when Jesus conquered it at Calvary's hill, he paid the redemption for all mankind. Amen. He laid his life down and shed his blood. He conquered hell and the dead and, and, and death for you and I. And we wasn't even saved. He redeemed us not with corruptible things, but with the precious blood of Jesus. And I need you to know there's many that's laying in the valley of dry bones. But the Lord said, I come in to breathe. I will breathe upon you again. I will give you life because I'm going to have me an army. And that army is going to rise up in the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And they're going to take it by force. They're going to bind devils. They're going to pray for the sick and they're going to be healed. Because I chose a generation to show what my power in. They're going to walk in the light. They're going to love me. They're going to seek my will and my ways. They're going to live a life that's pleasing to me. Because they're going to remember when they once was dead. They're going to remember when they was once without. And he came back in my life. Gave me another chance. Didn't let me die in my sin. Didn't let the devil destroy me. He stayed the hand of the enemy. Some of you don't know. You just that close to your doom and your end. But the Lord is like this. That devil's giving you your final smite. And he has stayed his hand. No, no, not that one. That one belonged to me. Uh-uh. No, you can't have that one. Oh, no, because your heart has been to begin to turn towards him. You thought on your ways. And you seeking to turn your feet unto his testimonies. And when it's like that, the Lord is holding it up. And God, he's forbearing. Come on out. Come on out. I'm your way of escape. I can't just do it. Look, at it. you got to, it's your will. You got to want it. You got to desire it. If you think about it, when he brought Israel out of the taskmaster, out of that dead state of bondage in Egypt, he didn't make them come out. He didn't make them obey. He didn't make them stay behind. They chose to do that. And because they chose to do that, they bent their wheel. Said, Lord, we're going to trust you. We can't do nothing of ourselves. He showed forth what he can do. And what the Lord is doing, that's why he said, whosoever will. Whosoever will it so. Whosoever get tired of the way they're going. Whosoever hate the sin that they're in. Hate their condition. Want something better. Whosoever say, Lord, help me again. Restore me again. Give me back my joy. I don't want this evil spirit. I want love. I want compassion. I want back everything you've given me. I want you to know God will do it for you. He'll do it for you. As we tie this together in the New Testament, this breathing, the Lord began me as I meditated upon this. He began to let me see what this ties into. He gave us to see a snippet of a people, giving us to realize that's the state of all mankind in the valley of dry bones, dead in their sin until he come into their life. And that breath that he breathed and the noise began to go and that army began to come together was the same breath or wind that came in on the day of Pentecost. Now, when we look at how this thing comes together and we go back and examine the scriptures in Acts the second chapter, after Jesus' ascension, after he descended and ascended and stayed around with them for 40 days and gave them the orders. Now, now what I need you to do is get up into the upper room and you tap mm -hmm. yes. there and to power mm -hmm. to you be endued with power. Mm -hmm. Ten days you go up in there. They didn't know it was going to be ten days, but he just told them to stay. He didn't tell them ten days. It just happened on the tenth day. And the Lord came in that room after they start carrying out doing what they wanted to do. Let's replace Judas. He didn't tell you to go up there and do that. He said, stay till you get power. Uh -huh. 
So somebody said, wait a minute, y'all, let's not keep on doing this because that ain't what he told us to do. You remember, he said, just go up there and wait till you get power. Yeah, you're right on that. Lord, help us not to mess up. I mean, they sit up in there. They sit up in structure and order. They sit up there in obedience. And the Bible said there was a sound of a wind, a rushing mighty wind. They were sitting down. If you're like me, you came through the ranks. When they said, Terry, they had you on all the thank of Jesus, thank of Jesus, thank of Jesus. Save me, save me, save me, save me, save me. That's it. Let go, hold on. Give up, give up, hold on. I mean, you went through that route. I mean, the Lord sat right there and said, all right, then look here. I need to go on ahead and give it to them because, I mean, the other ones that work with, they don't have way believe. Let me give this one some power. Amen. Let me give them experience. And we got the Holy Ghost. Amen. And those of us that got it, we realized once we got it, he got a hold on us. Amen. But what ended up happening, they was up in that room. Amen. And that sound came in there. And the Bible said they were sitting down. Amen. Before they were sitting down, they was praising God. Amen. I ain't never been in the service where folks were seeking for the Holy Ghost and you just start making them praise God. But if you look at this assembly and look at this scene, they was praising God. Amen. They praised God while they was up there. Amen. Today, because folks is just, they ain't deep as, the deep as they think. You go to praising God and say, I'm praising them because I'm seeking the Holy Ghost. Folks will look at you, that ain't how you get the Holy Ghost. That ain't how you get the Holy Ghost. Well, they has, has how they got the Holy Ghost. Amen. They were sitting down after praising God. He came up in there as a sound of a rushing mighty wind. When Ezekiel was sitting right here with the valley of dry bones, because you can't do nothing till you come alive. Amen. We find out that army came back together and what Jesus was doing he was putting together the army he was put, get, putting together his people the reason why I called you to follow me was to make fishes of men I called you to teach all nations but before you go I need you to go tarry till you get power from on high amen cause I gotta breathe upon you amen I gotta let the wind come your way to empower you to do what you've been saved for amen and they sat right there and when the whole Holy Ghost came when Pentecost would fully come. Amen. I didn't say Pentecostals because those are folks that do denomination. I'm preaching about Pentecost. Amen. I'm not talking about some man-made stuff. I'm talking about the day the Holy Ghost come in your life. Amen. Look at here. When you get filled with the Holy Ghost, that's your day that Pentecost had fully come. Amen. And when he comes into your life, he comes in there with inspiration. He comes up in there to put the sin here. He comes in there to bring life. He comes up in there to give you your marching orders. To give you power to prevail. And I mean to tell you what Ezekiel saw far off. The Lord revealed to him a snippet. And the Lord showed me, look son, now go to Acts chapter 2. And tie these things together. Because I need to breathe again. We need the Holy Ghost inspiration in our church services. Men need it back in their lives. Amen. You that was once alive. You ain't live no more like you used to. You used to wouldn't miss a service. When you first came to know the Lord, you was there. Couldn't no more than nose keep you nowhere. Amen. You say, I'm going in sick, but I'm coming out healed. I'm going in hurting, but I'm coming out healed. I'm going in trouble, but I'm coming out with peace. Because I'm going to press my way. When you got life and full of the Holy Ghost, it compels you to go. Amen. Because you realize if I can just get in his presence, if I can just get where the saints are at, I believe everything will be all right. But we're in the day of valley of dry bones. Men and women don't want to assemble no more. Amen. The love of man of grown coat. Amen. Murmuring complaint is at his height. We got men and women, amen, that have conspired. Amen. There are two places. Not that God given them. I mean, we got death just reigned. But the Lord is saying, I mean, today as we come in the spirit of God like in Zico, amen, we're preaching and prophesying to the wind to let God know if you don't breathe, men going to die in their sin. But if you breathe again, the army of the Lord can rise up. 
when the army rise up and don't fight each other. It's going to fight satanic powers. It's going to fight demonic spirits. It's going to come against the devil. It's going to be a terror to the devil. This church that God is building upon this rock, the gates of hell is not going to prevail. It's not going to conquer God's people. They're going to walk in sanctification. They're going to walk in holiness. They're going to live their life unto God. Be living sacrifices. Learning of the vocation. Wherewith they've been called. They're not going to murmur. They're not going to complain. But they're going to praise him. You can always tell when somebody starts losing their life. They start losing praise. They ain't got no joy. They come amongst us and they just be quiet. They used to get in the praise and at the name of Jesus, their feet would move. They would praise the Lord. The next thing you know, they lose that praise and dance. And they still, they die and disconnect. They no longer next to the vine. They're drying up, drying up. And when you start drying up, you get carried away captive. Mm -hmm. Israel was carried away captive by the Babylonian nation. Mm -hmm. Symbolic to what happened to man when man is in darkness. Mm -hmm. He's carried captive. Yes. Things dominate over you that you don't want dominating over you. Right. Mm -hmm. After the pleasure, that thing rub off. Because it's just a, for a season. You're going to hate the very fact that you left God for this stuff. Right now. And then you're going to realize you can't come to God on your own. That's right. Ooh, you sure he got to troll you. Amen. You're going to realize you have to examine and pay attention to your feet. Mm -hmm. And you got to start despising the way you're going. You have to think on your ways just to get back to God. And when you think on your ways, you got to start hating the position and the inactivity that you're in. That your soul can take over and say, Lord, restore me. Save me again. Watch me and I shall be clean. Help me out of this and get me out of this and this out of me. Lift me up again. Give me back my first love. I can't do it without you. I'm sorry. Help me. He said, we preach what he preached. That wind brought life back. I saw the love of God. And God said, ain't nothing too hard for me. Because number one, it wasn't their ability, it was my ability. They didn't realize I chose them, they didn't choose me. They were supposed to learn of me after I chose them, they were supposed to choose me back. Then when they got about them, um, the, those other gods, with their, no other gods in the nation, they would sit right there and say, that was a stone, we got the true and living God. Amen, uh-uh, they don't pull at me. I don't want that. I got what I want. He's the best thing. You should try Jesus. I ain't got to try what you tried. I already tried that, and it don't work. You already sit right there and tried living like that. It don't work like that. Shacking won't work. Up. It don't work like that. Amen, it don't work in the ways that you're accustomed to going. God got a whole nother way. And all his ways are life everlasting. I believe as we close this message, there's many that saying, Lord, come again. Yes. Breathe again. Yes. We need it. We need our churches to get full of the Holy Ghost. We need it to start with the leaders. The leaders need to be inspired. Yes. If you know that the 120 that was in the room, them was the leaders of the church. That's right. This is right. okay. You got to be inspired and you're going to help a world that's lost. Can't be sitting up in here criticizing, critiquing the world. Get a message from God to help somebody be saved and learn how to deliver it in love. In love, that's it. We had a. I was in a. I'm in this Bible group discussion, this teaching on Wednesdays, and the Lord showed me Jeremiah. And most times, people see Jeremiah, they say he's a weeping prophet. 
always whining. Oh my God, Jeremiah was going through mentally. He was this and that to try to identify with people that's mental. And they, they done dissected Jeremiah too. If you don't watch yourself, you won't see the character of God. Because Jeremiah was a servant of God and God gave him that weeping spirit. Because God longed for his people. And the message he gave Jeremiah, because Jeremiah had said some harsh things, he said that in love, in tears. Because he knew God did not want to see his people be destroyed. So he was always weeping and crying. Just like we found our other prophets. Then Jesus come on the scene over there weeping over Jerusalem. Weeping over a gang saying disobedient, rebellious people because he did not want to see them destroyed. It's the spirit that you do things in. So when we look at them, we dig it, we, I see the love of God showing towards the people that was in the land of captivity that had gave over to their captivity and lost their way. And the Lord still said, you my people. Yes. If, he, if, if, if he wasn't with them, he wouldn't have been watching them. He watched them in their captivity. I didn't save you to live like that. I didn't save you to give in. I didn't save you to forget me. I didn't save you to turn your back on me. I did you no wrong. You walked away from me. Mm-hmm. Yes. And that's when the enemy don't show people their ways. They start blaming everybody else. But look at your own ways and examine to see if you be in the faith of not. And even if you're not, it's for you to know God is saying, come on. Come on back. I can give you what you once had and give you more than what you had. As we stand on our feet, come on here and put your hands together. I'm done. Amen. I'm done. The power of God that came in upon that morning stood them up again. I'm persuaded that he can do it again. Father, I pray for those that have heard this message in internet land that's in spots of inactivity. They lost their way in despair, disconnected. Oh my God, oh God. I realize, Lord, you stand there ready to help them to, to lift them up. Take away the blindness up off their mind that they might see that you are yet the same God. You ain't changed. It was them that changed their position. Live them to know if they would look unto you, they can be saved. Give them to know if they call out unto you for help. If they call out unto you to forgive them, you will restore them. You would breathe again upon them and cause them to be what you saved them for. We're looking to you, oh God, that there will be a confirmation, that there will be a rumbling, that there will be a noise, that there will be a shaking that will go behind this word. That men and women, oh God, everywhere that's in every city, every nation that hears this message that they will be moved that the spiritual earthquake would take place in their life that their bones will come back together that life will come again that their relationship with you will be restored give them the seed to put all the efforts in coming after you not running after him not running after her but let them see all to run after you to reach after you that you can lift them up where they have fallen into captivity where you can save them again revive them again restore them again let them see that they're valuable unto you that you paid the price that redemptory price by shedding the blood you bought their souls they soul belong unto you breathe again breathe upon them and let life come in Jesus name we pray we want to thank you right now for the prevailing of your word. We want to thank you right now for what you're doing in our brothers and sisters' life. We want to thank you for the shaking and the coming together again. We give you the glory and we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. You go with God, he'll go with you. God, keep you as I pray. Hallelujah.